Hello and welcome to What the Math. Today's topic is equations and formula and also rearranging equations and formula. Basically, this is the stuff you would have learned in physics and it's also going to be appearing on your IB math test as well. Uh, so this is when you're given a formula and you have to find um, a particular variable or a particular value from that formula. For example, you're given a radius um, and a formula for circumference and you have to find the circumference using the radius. So this, this would be a more simple example. The more difficult example is actually one of the problems in the book and let's actually try to solve this together. And this is page 105, number 7, and it's actually written a little bit differently. Uh, I'm going to explain this to you before I show you how, the, how it's done. So uh, this is a problem where there's a person standing on, um, on a level surface, and this is actually on planet Earth, and this person is looking straight forward. So this person is actually looking straight forward right here. And um, so what this person sees is, we call this horizon. I believe you know this word already. And horizon is this imaginary kind of a line at the end of the uh, uh, your vision. Um, now the question is this, so how far away is this horizon? So basically, what is the distance here? What is the distance to the horizon? And this is something you can actually solve mathematically. Now before we can start this, let me explain to you how this is done. So imagine this not so perfect circle is our planet and you are standing right here on our on on the surface and you're looking to uh you're looking at the horizon and this is where the horizon is so this is a point of horizon um now we, we actually need to start measuring this from the center of the earth so imagine that we're going to draw imaginary line going this way and then we're going to draw imaginary line going this way and what do you see? And this is also a line, of course. And what do you see? Well, you see a triangle. And what kind of a triangle is this? Well, if you remember your geometry, this is actually a right triangle. So what do you think is coming next? That's right. Pythagoras is coming back. Um, so here, if you remember your theorems, uh, basically, we're trying to solve for this value. This value x, right? This is x. And we're trying to find this x using these two sides. So I just call them r and this is going to be r plus h r plus h so basically this is what these values are r is radius of earth h is h is your height or person's height and finally x is the distance uh, to the horizon and according to the pythagorean theorem um x or sorry not x but yes let's just write it this way first um, x squared plus r squared is going to equal hypotenuse squared, which is, in this case is r plus h squared, r plus h squared. Um, so this is the actual um, function or the actual formula for this. Now we just have to isolate the terms and find uh, our x. So how do we find x? Well, we take r squared and put it on the other side. So what you'll get from, from here is x squared equals to r plus h squared minus r squared. Let's uh, distribute uh, the brackets and basically what you'll get is r squared plus 2hr plus h squared minus r squared. r squared cancels out and x squared equals 2h squared plus 2hr. x squared equals to h h plus 2r in brackets and finally x equals to square root of h times h plus 2r and this is the value for x now in this case uh, this h right here this h is so so tiny that you can actually even ignore it and um, because it's compared to the radius of earth your height is really tiny so it's, it's almost it's almost close to zero you would say so here you can rewrite this as x equals to square root of what's left 2rh and this will give you a pretty accurate value for the distance x to the horizon okay so let's try solving this and use a real life example so uh let's just assume that uh, there's a person called mr pi and let's just assume that mr pi's height is uh, approximately 167 centimeters. In other words, it's 1.67 meters. 
Now, Mr. Pi is standing right here and he's looking at the horizon. So how far away is the horizon for Mr. Pi? And to find this, what we'll do is we'll substitute our value, which is this in, in this case, it's going to be h, h equals 1.67 into this right here. So substitute this into this and it, this is what we're looking for. We're looking for x and x equals two square root of two times radius of the earth and this you can look up on wikipedia and radius of the earth is it's 6371 kilometers but since we're doing this in meters we have to add three zeros um, and finally multiplied by mr pi's height which is 1.67 so this is all under one big square root and using your, your rgdc let's find out what this is and the answer is 4612 so it's 4612 and this is of course meters uh so it's about 4.6 kilometers now let's try the same for someone who's a little bit taller than mr pi let's just say there's another mr uh whose height is almost two meters so this other person is 198 centimeters so let's just call him mr x and his height is 198 centimeters or 198 meters so now we're just changing this value for this value and what do we get and the answer is 5022 5022 in other words this taller person can actually see a lot or somewhat uh farther away than mr pi so mr x can see at approximately almost five kilometers five uh 5022 meters um so basically this is how you would look for horizon distance uh, using a pythagorean theorem and using formula substitution and formula rearrangement now just for fun let me show you another example this is from a video game that i really really like it's called kerbal space program and what we're going to do is we're going to uh, try to calculate something else using another formula and this is kerbal space program here your goal is to basically send these cute little critters to different planets using very realistic uh, physics and mathematics now uh, i'm going to show you what my problem here is all right and so my problem is that i have this space station flying around here uh and it's flying around in an almost circular orbit around planet Kerbin. now what i need to figure out is i want to know how long does it take it take for this station to fly around Kerbin so that i can time uh, my next launch and land or connect or dock to it because if uh, I need to know how fast it moves or sorry not how fast it moves but how long it takes for it to orbit so that I can actually try to estimate when to launch my next rocket because if I launch it um, in a different time frame I may end up on the other side of the planet and I will be just using uh, orbits to try to catch up to each other and it will take forever now I want to launch when I'm really um when it's in the right spot so that when i actually end up reaching the orbit i'm really really close to this space station so basically it's a very complicated but at the same time very simple problem now the speed is already given to us it's actually right here it's 2244 meters per second and i know the height as well i know sorry i know the distance from the planet and the distance is 101,000 meters now if i look at the map i can actually see that this is a close to perfectly circular orbit so i can actually assume that this is a circle now i also need to know the radius of the planet because here we're looking at it as a, as a circle so this is a circle with a radius radius of planet plus distance from planet now what i need to find is how long does it take for it to basically go around one time so that i can time my next launch to do this i need to use two formulas and the first formula is for the circumference, so I just call it C, or basically the distance that the station travels around around its orbit. And this is basically 2 times pi times r, where r is radius of the planet, plus its height from the planet, plus h. And I also need to know how to find time. So what is time? Well, um, if you remember, if you remember velocity is actually distance divided by time which means that time must be distance divided by velocity so i have to do this c divided by v now if i look at my v right now it's 2244 so i can just rewrite this right here and basically my v equals to 2244 meters per second now what am I missing? I'm missing C. I have to find radius and I have to find height. 
my height is approximately uh, 1,000, 100, 1,000 uh, kilometers, so that's 100, 1,000 meters. And finally, my uh, my radius, radius of the planet. Now this is already given to you in the game. Um, so the radius of the planet is 600,000 meters or 600 kilometers. Now once I have my three values, I have to figure out how long does it take for this station to travel around this beautiful, beautiful planet so that I can, basically I can try to estimate my next launch. And because this currently has no crew in it, I actually want to put one of the cute little guys onto this space station so he can do some scientific discoveries and stuff like that. Alright, so let's do some math here and try to figure it out. Now to make this a little bit easier to understand and more simple, we're actually going to use both Y plot and the calculations. So for Y plot number one, Y1, we're going to enter the function for circumference. And the function for circumference is 2 uh, pi multiplied by radius plus height, which is 600,000 plus, you can see it right here, 100, it's approximately 101,000. And that's our Y1. Now, Y2 is going to be velocity. And velocity here is simply 224, I guess it's 2245 now. So let's just enter that, 2245. And now we're actually going to quit this and go into the calculation mode. And what we'll do is we'll divide uh, we're going to divide um, our circumference by our velocity. So basically, uh, we're dividing y1 by y2. And to do this, you're going to vars, variables, and you, do, you put your function variable y1, and then you divide it by function variable one two, y2. So y1 divided by y2. What is this going to give us? It's going to give us 1961 now what is this well this of course is seconds this is in seconds because we're using uh standard units so uh, if you want to find this in minutes you divide it by 60 and so divided by 60 will give us 32.69 uh basically almost uh, or just a little bit over half an hour so it takes 32 minutes points 32.7 minutes for my space station to fly around Kerbin. And uh, just to check this, let's see if this is true. All right, so let's check if we did our calculations correctly. So this is the station right here. Right now it's near this point called Apoapsis. And basically, if we did this calculation correctly, then after 32 minutes, it's going to come back into exactly the same spot. And uh, we can actually check this by uh, using the in-game clock. So right now it says that it's uh, 4 hours, 29 minutes and 50, or basically 4 hours and 30 minutes. So if we did calculations correctly, at 5 uh, hours and 2 minutes, it has to be in exactly in the same spot again. So let's see if we actually did the calculations correctly. We're going to advance time and check if we did this right. And I'm just going to show you how beautiful this game is by advancing the clock. So uh, here's a space station flying around Kerbin. It's 4.45, 4.46. I'm going to stop at uh, almost 5 just to show you what uh, what we got for that position. And um, coming up, coming up really soon. 5, 55, 56, 57, 58, night time, 59, and it's 5 o'clock. So in about two minutes, technically we should be near Apoapsis again. And look at that. Uh, we actually ended up doing the calculations correctly. So it says Apoapsis is coming up in 2 minutes 28 seconds and that's exactly what a clock, sa clock says as well. In other words, this was a very very go good way of using math to try to solve a video game problem. Um, anyway, hopefully you kind of got an idea of how to use uh, functions and how to use different equations and how to convert uh, different values in different equations. We're going to practice this a lot so don't worry if, you, if you're still having trouble with this. But anyway, Alright, so I'm going to stop this here and hopefully this was clear. This was four more substitutions and four more rearrangements from chapter four. And thank you for watching. Hopefully this was clear. Good luck to you and bye bye.